Welcome to the H series of webinars. This webinar series is aimed at new and aspiring sheep producers to give them a step up into the Queensland sheep industry. This webinar is part three of the series and is titled Handling Foundations, exploring the basics of working sheep efficiently and effectively with an emphasis on yard work. This webinar was delivered by renowned stock handler and dog trainer, Neil McDonald on the 15th of June, 2020. This is clip one of eight and covers why we should educate livestock, including the benefits it presents to handler safety, profitability, animal welfare, land condition, handler enjoyment, and staff retention. Probably we've got to work out why we need to, I believe, work our livestock probably different than we have been in the past. We've, we've got to get our handling of livestock to a whole new level. And one of the probably, the, well, not probably, the thing top of the list would be occupational health and safety. You're hearing now the four wheelers are getting banned. I think if you sat in the workshop and fell off the four wheeler, you might get a bruise, but you'd be all right. But we all have this plan of working stock very calm and quiet, and you have a team meeting before you go out. The mob's going along beautifully, and then all of a sudden, a Merino U. She's got an open face, and she's got two great big fat lamb, twin lambs at foot with big tails, which means they've probably missed the last muster and they travel along with the mob beautifully until they see they can see a rocky knob, a heap of trees, a gully, and that old ewe just cuts for it from the mob. And all of a sudden, this great plan of going on calm and quiet goes right out the door, you grit your teeth, you get on the bike, and you're full throttle, and you've got this idea of blasting past it and smoking it up so that it actually turns and runs back in the mob and never, ever gives you trouble again. Well, it doesn't work like that. And half, more often or not, you hit an ant bed, a breakaway gully, a log in the grass, and then as the bike's going over the, the cartwheel on along and you've come off, that's when you feel pain, and later on you hear a siren and see a flashing light. So I think it's super, super important that we change our livestock so that we haven't got rogue sheep in them. And so that is going to obviously help with the... Um, occupational health and safety that's the number one driver i believe of learning to work livestock at a, at a better level next one is profitability it's very hard to stay on the land if you're not making enough money so by getting livestock nice and crop cooperative it certainly does help profitability you will get less dust in the wool you'll get uh, higher weight gains uh, higher lamb weaning and, and notice i said not just lambs that are born Pretty important to be conscious of the, what happens to the lambs from uh, lamb marking, tailing through to weaning. And uh, that's an area where we can get some good uh, savings uh, of lamb lives, that is. Less weight loss in, in transit, which doesn't that much apply to sheep, but it does with cattle. Maybe one day sheep will be sold cents per kilo live weight. You don't know. They're getting quoted cents per kilo live weight in their valuations on auctions plus nowadays that didn't used to be. The reduction of vehicles needed, uh, less staff, that all leads to more profitability on the land. Uh, next one is animal welfare. We're all, it's uh, something we've got to be very, very careful of nowadays. It seems to be all about us. And um, in the past, there's obviously been uh, situations where there's been animal abuse filmed. And probably the way not to get animal abuse filmed is not to have animal, animal abuse. And it generally, we can be two types of people. We can be a lovely, placid person and tell them of a livestock, don't go somewhere. And that's when uh, sometimes another side of us comes out and that's when you can do your temper and that's when people get filmed probably doing things that don't need to happen. So we've got to be super careful of the way we're handling them, along with like shade, water, adequate feed, and the list goes on. So animal welfare is very high on the list of learning what we've got to have at a greater level. Next one is, this might seem a bit odd, enjoyment. I have heard of people that have got a sheep or a cattle station and they hate working sheep and cattle. So it's a little bit hard to understand why you would have gravitated to that. But it isn't very enjoyable when you it's a hot day and you can't get sheep to go down the race or on a truck or even off a truck. But if we get cooperative sheep, well-educated working dogs, we get some facilities and a roof over our race, sprinklers in the yard, shady yards, modern handling devices, and a Christmas bonus. I just sit down the corner, there's beer, probably not too early in the day, and effective communication. And we've got to 
train people and actually give some compliments. There's not always a lot of compliments go flying around a set of sheep or cattle yards. So I think a greater understanding of dogs and livestock can great can definitely bring more employment in, uh, enjoyment and employment. And so much is talked about with mental health nowadays. So I think we need to do uh, everything we can to keep people in a the, the morale in the bush up. Next one is care of landscape and environment. A lot of livestock are still set stock, where you can see the country on the left is um, a mob of sheep or cattle live in there all the time. And on the right of the fence, you can see they're split into little grazing lanes. And this is probably where the industry is going to head in the future, where we have bigger mobs of livestock in smaller areas shifted more often. And by doing that, you can control the rest period that the, the country can regenerate and that can certainly lead to uh, looking after better plant species and soil erosion. There was some very good people doing grazing courses and they would be a lot more knowledgeable than what I am on this, but I think one of the key things to having a successful grazing management is to be able to hand your, handle your livestock and uh, one would think that if you shifted your sheep every few days, they'd become very manageable. Well, they can, but if you're doing it wrong, they can be bits of monsters. So we'll tackle that as we go. The next thing for understanding dogs and livestock is to have staff retention. It's super important, I think, that some of the people that are working on the place this year actually stay the next year and maybe the year after. So they get to know the local knowledge of the place and they become great trainers of new people in the industry. Whereas, unfortunately, we get a crew, a staff this year, and at the end of the year, they're that disgruntled, they pack up and go. And one of the reasons is they've got fed up with the way livestock are being worked if they're not well educated and well handled. If we get some staff retention, we might actually get some family retention. And as you can see, a lot of sons and daughters don't stay on the place because of probably there might've been a few uh, altercations in the yards over the years, and that might be just the one thing that tips them to go into the city. We might actually get some dog retention, because if you can understand what I'm saying, some dogs don't sort of stay around forever. And if we get some more Australians working on the land, we might actually keep more Australian land in Australian ownership. So they are the list of things that maybe later on, I'm, I'm suggesting doing something with livestock and you can't really work out why. This is the bigger picture to reflect back to as to why we're doing what we're suggesting. Thank you for watching this short clip. For more information, please visit www.leadingsheep.com.au.